Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today, I am doing an unboxing, overview, and performance review of the Western Digital MyBook 8 terabyte external hard drive. Yes, these drives are getting big these days. This is an 8 terabyte external drive. Note, this does come in smaller sizes and the prices are reasonable down to the 4 gigabyte size. A 4 gigabyte version of this is $125. This drive is 250, 250, 125. You're basically the same price per terabyte. They also have a six terabyte version. They do make a two terabyte version for $99, but for a $25 savings, you're getting half the space. I would argue just buy the four terabyte version. That's kind of the, the, the minimum sweet spot in size. Now, why should you watch this video? Why should you care? Do you need to add more space to your computer? Do you want to expand your computer storage, but you don't want to open it and figure out how to mount another hard drive inside or figure out the cables and the screws and the brackets. You go, you know, I just, I need more space in my computer, but I don't want to mess with it. Okay, here's what's nice. USB 3.0 runs at five gigabits per second. The internal connectors for these drives is six gigabits per second. So this is about 20% slower than the connector inside. And of course, USB is not maybe the preferred connector interface. We'd like to have the serial ATA connector. But for what most people will do with their hard drive storage, none of that matters. Your main limitation is the performance of the media itself, the spinning mechanical hard drive. Both connectors are faster than the hard drive is. It really doesn't matter. If your computer's out of space and you want to add more space for videos, pictures, um, games. Buy one of these, plug it in, install your programs to it, copy your videos to it, it will be just fine. I would have no problems recommending to anyone that wants to add more space at a reasonable price to buy one of these, plug it into a USB 3.0 port, that's important. On a 2.0 port, it'll be slower than molasses. 3.0 port, and off to the race as you go. Um, Compared to the internal drive, it'll be awfully darn close. Now, there is a one terabyte internal hard drive, 7200 RPM installed in this computer. I will, during this video, test that drive against this one so you can see what the difference is between an external drive and an internal drive. If you look on the screen over here, you will see that there are already numbers up here. That is because I just finished filming the two and a half inch ultra portable my passbook uh, my passport uh, ultra uh, three terabyte drive and these are the numbers I left up on the screen from it that drive is a very very small very portable drive no external power brick required but slow and so the first set of numbers we're going to compare against is that one to this one so you can see the difference first let's see what comes on the box I have to take the plastic off. I haven't opened it yet. I actually use several external drives myself. My computer at home can handle multiple internal drives. In fact, uh, my main machine has got four, four terabyte Seagate drives inside the tower configured into two eight terabyte arrays. I have a lot of videos and files to store. I also have three external drives, two three terabyte my books and one seagate five terabyte external drive that i picked up over the past year or two that i use for backup and additional file storage this is going to be more video storage for me let's see what's in the box uh da -da 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 -da. oh here we go connectors and cables that's everything in the box I'll just close that back up. Let's see here. These are just uh, plastic holders for it. Because this is a mechanical hard drive and there are discs and read heads inside, make sure you don't ever drop these. There is protective plastic covering it and the reason for that is because this drive comes with that glossy black plastic that picks up every fingerprint on earth. Computer companies, stop using glossy plastic. It looks pretty in displays, and it picks up fingerprints. 
there you go. Western Digital My Book. Uh, to give you a size comparison, here's my standard desktop mouse, if that's at all helpful, or my hand. Um, here is the USB cable that comes with it. This is nice and long. This is good. The, um, the USB cable that came with the smaller uh, Western Digital My Passport was much shorter, but of course that drive is meant to be used with either laptop computers or really close to the machine. On one end, you have the little mini USB 3 connector, and on the other hand, you have a standard type A connector to go into your computer. Be sure you use a super speed connector on your computer to get maximum performance. And what I was doing was I was discharging my static electricity by touching the bare metal of the back of the computer. When I took that plastic wrap off that drive, I could feel the static charge building up. Be careful. Always be sure to discharge yourself. If you pull off plastic and you can feel your, the hairs tingling, you have a static charge. Electronic components do not like a static charge. Now, if I just plug this in now, it's not going to work. And that's because, unlike the other, op unlike the other options I showed you, power brick. I didn't set this up in advance because I wanted you to see the process of actually setting this up yourself in real time so you know what to expect. If you buy one of these, what does it take to set up? And of course these cords are always, I probably untangled it the wrong way, but here we go. That's about how long that cord is, sufficiently long. I'm just going to lean down here and plug it into an outlet I have set up beneath my desk. And then I am going to plug it into, okay, good, my static charge is gone. So there's a power outlet on the back of the drive. And then there is, should I straighten this, a USB connector right here. And as soon as I plug this in, it will turn the drive on. There is no power switch on this drive. As soon as it has power, and as soon as it plugs into a USB port, the drive turns on. As long as your computer's on, this will be on. Now what I don't know is does the current generation of these drives turn themselves off when you turn your computer off or do they stay on all the time? If I remember at the end of this video, I'll shut the machine down and see if the drive turns off. And this is just warranty and technical support information. I'll leave that there so you can see the pretty box. Let's see here. Does the computer see the drive? Yep. I pulled up, uh, this is another nice thing about external drives. They come pre-formatted and pre-partitioned. You don't have to do anything. You plug it in, boom, it works. If you look in Windows File Explorer, you will see that the F drive has been added. MyBook F 7.27 terabytes. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, you said this was an eight terabyte drive. Yes, but the drive companies measure data differently than Windows does. And this is true of all drives and all companies, and it's been this way for 30 plus years and isn't going to change anytime soon. You always lose about seven or eight percent of your listed storage because of the way they count space. It's just the way it is. So this actually has 7.27 terabytes of space. Incidentally, completely unrelated, this will be the very first eight terabyte drive I've used of any type anywhere. Previously, my biggest drives were my four terabyte drives in my machine at home. So I'm going to close this. Now, I need to close this program and reopen it to have it redetect the drive. But I want you to make a note of these numbers. Basically, for random read and random write, uh, for random read speed, we're at half a megabyte per second. And for, ran, uh, for read speed, we're at 120 megabytes per second. Let's see how well this drive does compared to the small two and a half inch drive I did in the previous video. I'm going to close this program. I will reopen it. There it properly detects the eight terabyte drive. And I'm going to run all the tests. I'm running them five times each for repeatability. Uh, one, gigabit, uh, one gigabyte of data set. And there it goes. I'm now going to cut the video here because this takes about five minutes to run and nobody wants to watch this run for five minutes. So we'll be back in a second with the results. And we're back. If you take a look at these results, you should notice a couple of differences. First of all, 
on sequential read and sequential write speed. First of all, it doesn't make any difference, once again, whether we have a Q depth of 32 with multi-threading turned on, which is line one, or single thread, single Q, which is line three, because it's a hard drive and hard drives are mature technology. They can only do one thing at a time, and so it doesn't really make any difference what your Q depth is. Moving on to the more important number of random read and random write speed. Let's take a look at random read speed first. It's basically the same, again, Q depth one, Q depth 32, which is line two, Q depth one, which is line four. Doesn't make any difference, it's basically the same. 1.5 megabytes per second. I mentioned before, the results that you saw on the screen when I first started this video was about 0.5 megabytes per second. This is three times faster than the small ultra portable hard drives. I brought it over to show you. I just finished filming the video of this. A link will be in the video description below. But this is a three terabyte Western Digital uh, self-powered two and a half inch hard drive. It's powered off the USB bus, no power brick required. It's portable. It's meant to be moved around. It's meant to be taken with you from office to home or school to home or traveling with your laptop. But this desktop hard drive is three times faster in random read speeds and about 25% faster in random write speeds than this drive is. In sequential transfer rate, this one is about 120 megabytes per second versus 200 megabytes a second. That difference, you know, honestly, unless you're reading and writing the whole drive, um, if you have a five gigabyte file to read, this one will do it in 30 seconds. That one will do it in 20 seconds. Big deal. But if you want to play games on a hard drive, if you install Battlefield 4 on this drive, it will be noticeably slower than if you install it on that drive. So, less expensive, more performance, but not as portable. External power brick. Now, it is portable. You can absolutely take the power brick with you and move it between locations. But if you have a laptop and you're trying to use it, say, at Starbucks, not really portable. So, was this video helpful to you? Did you like it? Give it a like. Did you not? That's okay, too. Uh, remember to subscribe to my channel. It's the big red button right down there. Now, questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas. Comment section below, tell me what you think. I can't read your mind. You have to tell me what you're thinking. If this video was helpful to you and you decide to buy this or anything else I review, please use my links to Amazon in the video description below. Those are referral links. They do pay me a small commission, but it is my primary funding source for these videos. I didn't receive anything you see here for free from any of these companies. None of them sponsor me. I bought it all myself off of Amazon. Why? First of all, Amazon has the best customer service in the world. They really do. They, they will make it right if there's any problem. Um, I love their customer service. I love their free shipping. I love their shipping times. And most of the time, they have the best price around or really, really close to it. So if you want to support my channel and you want to see lots more videos like this, by all means use those links to go buy this hard drive or the other drive or a jar of peanut butter, which they sell as well, and I would certainly be appreciative. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.